Officer. I'm so glad you're here. All my personal belongings were stolen while I was enjoying a nice game of tennis. Well, what can I do for you, ma'am? What can you do for me? We can start by getting my personal information so I can at least get my license to get home on. After all, as soon as I pull out on the street, there will be a license check and I'll be given a ticket. Which will end up costing me a lot of money that I don't have. Let me save you time and worry here, ma'am. I'm not supposed to let you in on this, but you don't need a license to travel home in your automobile. Notice I said travel and not operate. Travel and operate. Is there really a difference in the two? I mean, I'm traveling while in the car. What's the difference? I'll tell you the difference. Traveling is a right you have by nature of birth. God said go. He didn't say how, right? When you operate a vehicle, it is a form of commerce indicating that you're charging a fare for passengers or moving freight for a corporation of some type. Can you see the difference, ma'am? I'm starting to see the difference. Could you explain a little more, please? Back in 1992 in Anderson Fox and Twomey, 14th edition of Uniform Commercial Code, there is a case in there that says how a car is a consumer good. A man actually beat the courts using this case. Here's the catch though. The minute you put insurance on it, it becomes business property and no longer is it a consumer good. It is then called a vehicle and it has always been this way all the way back to the Hilton carriage case in the 1790s of carriages in Washington DC, same on the house. The minute you insure it, the state owns the business property. Look up address in legal dictionary terms. It is not what you think. What's the first thing they ask before they give to the plate for the consumer good? Is it insured? No? Then go get insurance because we can give you the plate. Tricky bastards, huh? So you mean to tell me that a car is considered a consumer good until we, the public, put insurance on it? Then it is considered a business good. How is that possible? What's going on here? Well, you see, ma'am. We in the revenue generating business or what you call law, are in the business of misleading people through what we call legal terms. What words you may use in everyday conversation. We in the legal field use against by defining the word differently when we want to take money from you. Most people say nothing and don't know any better. That's why non-resident aliens never register the car never put insurance on it or the house and so forth. Yes. Even life insurance places the body into admiralty jurisdiction to become a person made liable regardless if he used Federal Reserve notes or not and that way they do not have to say you are taxed for using the Federal Reserve's private money. A very notable case is Delovio vs. Boyd, where it was stated, consumer goods are those which are used or bought for use primarily for personal, family or household purposes 9-109. It is the intended use rather than the nature of the article which determines its character. For example, goods purchased by a buyer for resale to ultimate consumers are not consumer goods in the hand of such a middleman but constitute a part of his inventory. A mobile home in possession of the person making use thereof is a consumer good. An automobile is a consumer good when purchased by the buyer to go to and from work. Equipment used in business is not a consumer good. Hence. A tractor purchased by a construction contractor is not a consumer good, but equipment. A man won two cases, one in 1975 and one in 1989. After having done an exhaustive search through the archives of several states it is clearly shown that one need not obtain a permission license from the corporate states to merely travel in the mode of transportation of the time. The key terms in all motor vehicle laws are vehicle, motor vehicle, passenger, transportation, operator, carrier, all having to do with commercial aspects involved using the highways for making a gain in business and not for travel. Some states as for instance New Jersey, is very clear in their Title 39 annotated motor vehicle law that one is accepted from the entire Title 39 as stated in 39, 3-1 which I will quote to you now, certain vehicles accepted from chapter automobile fire engines and such self-propelling vehicles as are used neither for the conveyance of persons for hire, pleasure, or business, nor for the transportation of freights, such as steam road rollers and traction engines are accepted from the provisions of this chapter. 
This means the entire MV statutes including driver license et al. See Title 18 Infra at PG 28, in researching vehicle laws in New Jersey back to 1890, before automobiles were used, one need only to read the New Jersey Title Chapter 52 sections in Licenses 40, 52-1 A. All vehicles used for the transportation of passengers, baggage, merchandise and goods and chattels of any kind, and the owners and drivers of all such vehicles. Need licenses, there you have it all rolled up in a neat ball. All you have to remember is terms are used, in law. Words are used outside, of law. I'd like to add one final note and drive this point home. The 1890 title on the case in New Jersey and note it says drive a horse not ride a horse. How can you drive a horse? This is where words are not used, ride, but the term drive has a different meaning the legislators gave it to commit highway robbery under law terms. And they hired the cop to perform that highway robbery under admiralty law so I can collect the booty. Which is a admiralty term for fines collected on land, that states, 40, 52-154, states, a provision and an ordinance that no person shall drive a horse attached to a business vehicle without a permit unless he shall have been a resident of the city for three months was unlawful, as a discrimination based of length of residence. Jersey City v. Chosson 81 and JL 315, 79 Atlantic Reports 1058, year of 1911 clearly shows the term vehicle can be a horse-drawn wagon which is replaced by a motor car called a motor vehicle if used to transport passengers and the like mentioned above. You argue words and they destroy you with terms. They look at you and say, another dumb ass bites our dust. We just love these uneducated idiots, laughing all the way to the bank with your money of easy fleecing. That's reality. And why the myth and the reality book was written in 2008. All of this information is brought to you by the informer and is intended for educational uses only. It is not legal advice and should not be construed as such. It is simply to show you how you are being taken by yet another corrupt system by being a 14th Amendment citizen slave. Happy Huntings!